Okay, so um, thank you very much to Grant and for One People, One World for having me here today. It's truly an honour and a pleasure and a positive experience to be with so many dedicated groups and individuals here who uh, seek to improve the world. But change the world to what? Um, what's the long-term plan here exactly? This is what the movement seeks to address. So um, the word zeitgeist <clears throat> means the general, moral, and intellectual and cultural climate of an era. Movement denotes a change in position. Therefore, the zeitgeist movement seek a transition away from our current unsustainable values and practices to those that are more conducive towards living in a peaceful and sustainable world. The first step, in our view, therefore, has to be an educational one. We all know what the problems are, from environmental destruction to global poverty and war. But systems are what they produce, not what we wish them to produce. Therefore, we must question everything about our current socio-economic system as it is ultimately responsible for these results. In doing so, we must also offer a clear vision about exactly what situation we want with a concrete plan of how we intend to get there. Um, perhaps the most optimal approach in uh, the movement's view in going about doing this was summed up by Buckminster Fuller when he said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. That's why the title of this presentation is World Unity, the Technical Approach. Uh, to solve any problem, we must first know what we are dealing with in terms of the obstacles and barriers which stand in our way. So I'm going to go through these briefly now. The first structural blockade being fractional reserve banking. This is essentially how money comes into existence on this planet globally. Um, the, uh, when you, the money is signed into existence basically when you go in and you say you want it when you sign a loan contract. So before then, the bank never had the money. Now, as if that fraudulent practice isn't enough, all of that, those debts are created with interest applied, which means that even if everybody were to pay back the private banks tomorrow, you'd still owe the interest. So the debt is never, ever, ever going to be paid off. Moreover, it actually creates a scarcity and imbalance actually in the monetary system, which, which reinforces the, the wealth, uh, the money uh, and um, being flowed to the top of the pyramid, uh, exasperating wealth income inequality. Also, it leads very nicely into the structural blockade number two, which is infinite growth on a finite planet, because clearly more consumption means more money demand, more money demand, more consumption, infinite growth. Uh, summed up very well uh, on this slide up here, which says, what you environmentalists have got to understand is that the destruction of the planet may be the price we have to pay for a healthy economy. <laughs> Gotta love their logic. The third blockade is technological unemployment. This is the exponential rate of technological efficiency over time and the decrease of it in price. What this is coming to mean is that many of the jobs we've come to think of as sacrosanct in our economy simply will not be in the years to come. Whereas these new technological advancements used to create employment opportunities, everybody pretty much unilaterally across the fields of academia now, now agrees that that's not going to be the reality in years to come. Now, if people don't have the purchasing power because they don't have jobs to buy the, the things that the machines are turning out, I think the writing's on the wall. That's why it's called the contradiction of capitalism. So this system is coming to an end whether we like it or not. So what's the big idea? Well, as has been expressed today, it seems clear that we need to move from a competitive system based on differential advantage, waste, and scarcity-based economics to a sustainable, collaborative, and emergent one based on the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. Is there a model capable of delivering these aims? Yes. And this is what the movement promotes as an alternative. It's called a natural law resource-based economy. Put simply, it's the application of the scientific method for social concern. We've never really been technically capable of delivering such a thing until very recent times. So why science? The scientific method is the ultimate resolver of differences, eventually, in a world divided over politics, economics, philosophy, religion, business practices. Eventually, people can come to some sort of agreement around um, the scientific method. Um, and it, actually, it's responsible for all of our ways of life um, and the amenities we've come to enjoy, from the chair you're sitting on right now to the smartphone that's li likely in your pocket. But it's never been applied to our social system in a truly holistic sense. 
Examples of what could be achieved were we to adopt this method would be global resource management um, in order to keep a dynamic track of our global resource use, absolute sustainable energy abundance, which we could decipher the best locations for energy locations by using a systems theory approach to planetary management, uh, global food abundance using sustainable agricultural methods such as hydroponics, aquaponics, aeroponics, and permaculture. Clean drinking water obviously shouldn't be a problem on a planet 71% covered in the stuff as it's going to come to be in our ridiculous system in times to come. <clears throat> uh, sustainable housing and city design. Um, automated production, delivery, and construction of robust buildings is uh, now reality through such technologies as GPS-guided tracking systems, AI, robotics, and 3D printing. These buildings from the Venus Project, for example, were designed with sustainable um, practices in mind from the outset. So rather than taking resources from all corners of the planet, piecing them together to make a house somewhere, so, somewhere and then throwing most of that away completely unsustainably, why not build them in one location, take them to uh, where you need them to be and put them up there? It saves time, it saves effort, it saves resources. It, it uh, is just a far, far better practice to actually achieve. And the, um, so, um, right, so, uh, safe, clean, and faster short-distance transportation could be achieved with driverless cars, for example. Now, very often, at some point, uh, um, you may have a neurotic response from someone saying, oh, no, I don't like the idea of that. Human beings should be in control. Well, okay, but these cars have done 300,000 miles on the United States roads and they haven't crashed once. Compare that to human error on this planet a year where 1.2 million people die from road deaths, and I don't think it's a contest, I have to be honest. Um, clean and uh, efficient car technology could be supplied by electric cars, massively played down in the mainstream media as to their actual capacity if you look into this issue in any detail. And safe, clean, and faster long-distance transportation could be achieved with maglev trains. These are trains suspended on a pole by magnetism to reduce friction. If housed in an airtight frictionless tube to reduce air drag, they can travel at speeds of up to 4,000 miles an hour safely. Eight times faster than planes. They use just 2% of the energy and they're completely clean. So, if planes are the biggest contributor to CO2 emissions, why are we not hearing about this? Seems like a, a reasonable solution to the, that issue. But what's the point of all of this technical approach? Well, because put simply, scarcity is the problem and access abundance is the solution. Our scarcity-based economic system has delivered these results on the left. We want the results on the right. We need an economic system that's geared around access abundance. Because access abundance means that there's no need for ownership. Notice how I've underlined the word need here. Because no one should or is going to take away anybody's stuff. Okay? I just want to be absolutely clear about that. It's just more logical to share than for everyone to own one of everything. Just like your parents tell you when you were a kid and then you grow up and they say, no, now you've got to hoard everything. Yeah, and keep it to yourself. So that is good for profit and terrible for the planet. Besides, ownership is a restriction, not a freedom. We require access to the means of life. It's not communism, it's common sense. Scarcity leads to competition, inequality, shame and disrespect, and violence. If we want to solve crime and corruption, then we must address the root cause of the problem. It is our, not our human nature to live this way. We are doing so in order to survive. If we change the rules of the game we're playing, then everyone can win. It's not a utopia. There's no such thing. There never has been and there never will be. It will just be a better direction in which to head than our current course. Besides, I would assert that our current system is the utopia that professes that infinite growth and competition will lead to us all walking off into the sunset and living happily ever after. That is a utopian vision. The transition to a sustainable, peaceful and collaborative world is not going to be achieved by just the zeitgeist movement. It is a collaborative effort. And it's you, it's me, it's us, it's here and it's now. Just because it's difficult to get from A to B does not resolve the need to do so. We must work together and take a proactive stance in all aspects of our lives and efforts to change the world um, for the better by leading by example. Because it's far easier to light a candle than to curse the darkness. 
The movement is proud to be a part of this next transition in human life. We run events here in London and would like to host joint events with all of the organizations here today to start the journey to a better world by working together to do so. We can do it, we need to do it, so let's get started. Thank you very much. Thank you.